Hi everyone, um, today I'm going to be working on the, the lathe. This um, machine here is actually a, a multi-purpose machine. It's, uh, it's got a, a lathe, that's the, the headstock there. Um, we've got a, a circular saw and there's a, a planing attachment as well. Quite a versatile tool. It's got about a three, three foot bed uh, for um, turning spindles and that sort of length. Um, what I'd like to do today is turn a small bowl, so very simple, uh, sort of thing that you might start off with when you're, you're learning how to to, um, to turn um, and um, yeah we'll just keep the video running and see how we go. Um, this lathe is one I picked up uh, second hand, it was about £100, uh, someone that uh, was moving house and uh, didn't want to take it with them. Uh, I've got another one, a nice uh, shiny new little Axminster that my mother bought me for a present, which is brilliant too. So it doesn't have to be a grumpy old lathe like this Coronet Major, um, it can be something newer. It's set to a, a slowest speed, this has got four speed settings onto its slowest at the moment because we're going to be rough turning. Uh, I may speed it up later, uh, we'll see how we get on, and um, uh, yeah, let, let's see how we go. Um, health and safety, uh, I am doing my own risk assessments for this, I've used this machine before, uh, I'm quite comfortable with the, the risks that I'm going to present myself with. You need to do your own risk assessments because the risk to you is yours. Uh, obviously I don't accept any responsibility for what you're doing in your workshop, um, so be safe, be sensible, uh, and uh, if in doubt then you know, err on the side of caution. Uh, so uh, I have a uh, disc that uh, goes on here uh, that is for um, attaching two pieces of work, um, so I'm going to attach this to a turning blank. This is a blank I've had in stock for a while. You could use anything, you could use end grain, you could use side grain. This is a side grain blank, I think it's um, a piece of cherry wood. You can see some nice knots in there, so the grain is, the grain is going through it in this direction. Uh, that might mean that it's at risk of splitting off chunks from the sides, but hopefully it's a nice um, clean grain and we won't have too much trouble. There is a a sort of bit of um, cutting damage there which I'm thinking will probably be into the curve of the base of the bowl. I'm going to do the base of the bowl first, uh, create a nice uh, flat bottom, good to have a flat bottom, uh, and um, uh, some sort of curves off the edge of that, you'll see. Anyway, let's get going. Um, we'll attach this in the uh, sort of centre, obviously the centre of this, if you think about how this is going to happen, We'll have some taken off the bottoms for the for the curve of the bowl on the outside, and then in the top, we'll take out the core of it to create the bowl. So this piece in the middle, I'm not worried about. So I can screw to that without worrying to shape the bottom or base. So there we go. So we'll attach this to there. I'm going to try and get it central, bearing in mind that it's not absolutely flat across. So it's going to be a bit lumpy when it first starts turning. Um, I've got some screws here, I'm just going to wind these in, stick with the centre of it, just to keep it out of any area that I might want to keep. Wind those in. These are uh, countersink screws, nothing special. Um, it's got countersink holes on the, um, uh, on the plate. Uh, even if it didn't, I might still use countersink because countersink screws are very good for centering screws in the hole, even if they're not into countersunk holes. Um, don't be too worried about using countersunk screws in non-countersunk holes. Oh. Okay, so that's in. Put this onto here. Uh, I will say that I've had a clear up before I've started all this. My workshop tends to be a fairly uh, uh, busy place uh, and tends to be uh, littered with whatever's gone before. So I've, I've had a big clear up, um, cleared the, the lathe off, obviously. Uh, that's actually turning quite smoothly, so hopefully it won't be too lumpy. Um, could give it a quick spin. There we go. Very nice. So beware, things that are turning fast have uh, you know, a risk of causing harm. Yes. Um, excellent, so happy with that. Ooh, nice ring from the saw blade there as it slows down and stops. Um, so this is a, a movable um, 
uh, rest for, for tools. So I've got various tools under here, um, such as this, such as uh, uh, some uh, uh, gouges, so I can rest my gouge onto, onto the uh, stalk at, at the appropriate height. What we have to do is uh, obviously adjust the stock with a spanner. Uh, there's a, a, a nice little nut under here that allows this to be loosened and we can then move this around and clear all the dust out. That can be put wherever it needs to go uh, at whatever angle. We can get it back together. Oh, come on. There she blows. So I'm going to set that somewhere about there. The idea with this is we get pretty close to this, but, but we don't want it to hit. Somewhere about there. Tighten it down. This part obviously comes up and down and can twist around. So we'll. Ooh, that's interesting. The lathe bed only has a certain amount of depth. So there's a certain limit to the diameter of thing you can put between the bed and the sort of the radius between the center and the, and the base on this is somewhere around 115 millimeters not very big what you can do with this machine is actually turn the whole headstock around so it faces away and you can then turn much bigger things using a, a, a rest off this piece that's sticking out which is great um, but you can't use a tail stock on it would be good if I wanted to do a big bowl I'm not doing a big bowl I'm gonna manage with this today so let's just bring this in a piece at a time so that I can get it all the way across it. I'm going to bring it into there, tighten it off. Uh, I'm going to raise this up to about here, just so that it's a few millimetres off. Just check that it's not hitting, which is not that's all tight. Hopefully. Start it up. Seems to have starting problems. This uh, lathe, a bit like my car. Not to worry. So I'm going to introduce this at a slight angle. You can see the angle of the um, the, the gouge uh, on the, the steel there, uh, that is going to be similar to here. If I rest it so that the blade is lifted away from it, it will just touch and nothing will happen. As I bring it in, it will start to cut. There we go, that's where it's starting to cut. So I'm going to rest, I'm going to hold the back of this firmly with my hand here. Not grip hard, but firmly so it can't, can't come out. Just wrapping my fingers around it a bit. And the top I'm going to be pressing down against the rest. And I'm just going to work my way along, taking off a small amount, pressing down fairly hard, but I'm not pressing into the wood very hard. I'm just taking off a small amount of it. You will hear it when it starts to dig in more. Vibrating, that's because it's still not round. It will vibrate less and less as we get more and more round. So if I stop this now, you see how it looks. It's always good to see how you're getting on. What we can see now is that it's shaved off on this section. There's a bit there that hasn't. This bit that's damaged, I haven't cut into fully yet. This bit's nice and clean. So what I'm trying to do here is get to a point where it's clean all the way round. Uh, and that way I've got a, a, cylind a, a cylinder that is uh, symmetrical. What I also need to do is take the end off flat so that the two ends are parallel. That way I can mount it onto this end from the base once I've finished the base uh, and turn out the middle. So let's keep going. Still not going to start. There you want to. There we go. Uh, let's try a different gouge. That's a nice big one here. Oh yeah, there we go. Steady on. Mm, it's bits of that damage coming off. I'm just going to give this a 
Done is put to uh, rest it that against the grinding wheel to uh, give it a, a sharp edge. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's master. I'm thinking you can't actually see me putting the tool on here, so I'm gonna see if I can spin this mount around and uh, start. To, uh, Okay, so I've moved you across. Um, you can now, hopefully, you can see into here. You can see where the, the blade's going to be touching the the wood on the tort. Uh, hopefully, this can now move in. Yeah, there we go. How far? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, that's it there. Let's just move that slightly off there. Free sort of journey across the across the wood. So at the top, which is where I uh, I need it to be biggest, it's actually nice and quiet. There's a few bits there, that's a bit there. It's not finished yet. Then it goes back to nice and clean. But down here, it starts to get noisy. And I think that's where where we've got that damage. I also want to take some off for the sort of rounding of the ball so that we get a ball shake to you know, start doing that here. Just to take that off. What I can also do, best stop it before you adjust your rest, but my risk, up to you. looking at the camera and uh, trying not to block your view and not paying attention to what I'm doing. So we're going to need to bring this rest around. But before I do, let's just turn it down a bit more. See if we can get, start getting a bit of a bold shape here. the rest and the wood. Other 
it, nothing of me is ever forward of that point. I'm always behind it. It's only the tool that's forward of it. It's only the tool in the wood that can do anything at all. Not my fingers. I like my fingers. I'm going to try and keep them attached. Oh. Right, let's shut this up and see how we do. Also important when you're turning something takes a long time. Make sure you've got some crisps to have. Chipsticks are fantastic, but other varieties are available. <clears throat> yeah. All right, we've got a nice bit of knot on this. Mmm, interesting grim. And here you can see that. That's an area of wax that from the old blank, where I still haven't managed to turn it down. So I need to go through this, make it smaller. And uh, so I'll keep carrying on. Here we go. Ready. all gone now. I do have a bit of um, splitting off of the grain there which uh, is catching on the um, tool so we'll, we'll spin it up faster and see if it helps with that. Before I do I'm just gonna pull this round and do the base and get that fairly square. Obviously we need the um, when we do the base it's got to sit flat so what we don't want is the middle sticking out further than the rim when it sits on the uh, on what on a you know shelf or wherever it goes it needs to be have a ring that contacts the the floor or a, an absolutely flat base of course which is probably unachievable i've got stuff here you will find you've got a build up of sawdust very useful if you need sawdust shavings rather um, chuck them on the fire if you've got a fire So I'm leaving about uh, three or four millimetres, I suppose. Something like that. There we go. That's clear of everything. Just make sure that nothing is going to hit. Now, off we go. Make sure that the gouge is going to be particularly good on this. Oh, there, we go. there we go. So as we get to the middle, it doesn't like to cut very well and if you go past the middle it will try to jump because it's going that way rather than that way because the wood should always go into the tool. I always love them using nice sharp tools as well. See these bits of wood spinning off as well. Let's do this nice and gentle for something caught there. Oh, 
lovely piece of wood. Very nice. Blade made a mess. That's a shame. Or oh, maybe that was my gouge sticking in. Nice, though. This uh, grain is lovely. What I might do is spin this up a bit faster and try and get this outside looking a bit, a bit nicer with some speed. Uh, speed tends to make things cut very small amounts very quickly. So it tends to lead to a much finer finish. It's sort of finishing rather than roughing. Roughing being the term for sort of roughly cutting something. So, uh, got to eat the chipsticks. Mm. Amazing. Some modern machines have fancy ways of changing speed, like pressing different buttons or turning a knob. This one you have to change the belt. Pretty fast. Mm. See, see how it behaves. And let's get in a bit closer as well. Now that we've taken off the rough, hopefully I can sort of kind of go back over the area I've done before. Is that just turning and turning? Oh, there we go. Hang with it. Hang with it. God. Hmm. Right. This might go very fast. Well, not at all. Okay. A lot of noise in there. I'm not going to run it that fast. Not if it's not balanced well enough. to not back to full slow but a bit quicker no noise okay it's nice to nice to have things quiet right. family motto he who does nothing makes nothing or my personal preference he who does nothing makes no mistakes we all make mistakes. Learn from them. That's the important thing. Learn from them. If you don't do things, if you don't do anything, you'll never make any mistakes, but you'll never learn anything either. Now, making mistakes is absolutely normal and it's absolutely fine. Unless you're a brain surgeon. But then still it's fine, but you do it in the, you do your learning in ways that won't harm people. But yeah. Oh, nice. This is nice. Spin this round.
Just for you to too. See if I can get this thing a bit smoother.
Right, I'm going to rush it on the inside. See how we get on with that. Do, 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 do. Might have to go around the other side of the leaf for this one. So I'm turning into, trying to get into there. What I want to do once I've got this shaped out is go inside it like that so I can put the tool against it. So I'll start with this, tiny like this. for this to shoot off into this side so I do need to really need to work on the other side. I'm going to keep going a bit deeper on this. It's taken a while, but it'll be worth it. Try and get this 
bit smoother on the inside. Um, might be a challenge. We shall see. Major scoring there. Which I really need to get out. Oh. Right, I think we might be there. What I'm going to do is get some um, olive oil in for this, just to tone it down. Just go into the house and get some.
Obviously there's some screw holes from the plate on this, but other than that, that is now a nice little bore. It's got a nice bit of detail in there. You know, it's not perfect, but as a sort of first effort for a wood turning bowl. So that's pretty, uh, pretty amazing really. And I shall be giving that to uh, a great aunt of mine who uh, can't see very well. Hopefully, she'll have a happy Christmas. Thanks guys.